So section eight here deals with the ethical duties that you have when dealing with an investor client. So out of the gate, let's talk a little bit about your fiduciary relationship and the NAR's code of ethics. Notice specifically, let me back up. I'm assuming everybody out there is a member of the National Association of Realtors. If that's true, you have a code of ethics you must abide by. Failure to abide by the code of ethics actually can get you in trouble and substantial penalties. The one thing I want to clarify about the code of ethics is it does not say these are the code of ethics for mom and pop real estate buyers and sellers. No, it's code of ethics for clients. It does not distinguish between investor clients and mom and pop clients. So your code of ethics that you must abide by with your real estate clients is the exact same code that you have to abide by by your investor. There's really no difference in codes based upon the client type. You still have 17 canons of ethical treatments that you must abide by with your investor client, just like you do your mom and pop buyer client. Now, let me give you a warning because, and let's go back and visit a statement we just mentioned earlier, because your 80-20 rule, the advantage to dealing with clients is, I'm sorry, the advantage to dealing with investors is that 80% of your income can come from 20%. So you may have a client five, six, seven times a year. I want to warn you, do not become too friendly with that investor buyer or investor seller. And what I mean by that is you need to become a partner, but not a partner. You are not a partner in this transaction. All the decisions still need to be made by the client. Don't think or don't do something. Well, I've worked with this guy before. I know he'd never take that deal. So yeah, don't, uh, we're not interested. Don't do that. <clears throat> you still have the ethical obligation to the client. Don't become too friendly with them. It's still their decision. You still owe them all of the fiduciary responsibilities, care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, confidentiality, and you still have to abide by the code of ethics. So you want to become a partner, but you're not a decision-making partner. You still must adhere to the code of ethics. Now, there have been several violations here in the code of ethics, and I have searched out several different states and several different uh, violations to bring probably two or three of the most common ones I see with uh, agents and their investor client. So Article 1, Standard of Practice 116, Realtors shall not access or use or permit or enable others to access or use, limit or manage the property on terms or condition other than those authorized by the owner or the seller. What that is saying is, you still have to do your duty specifically when it comes to showing. I have had many investors ask me, dude, just give me the code, I'll go in. Oh, I know I don't want to bring you all the way up to the north side. Just give me the code and I'll go in. Or worse, some agent go, oh, he's an investor. He knows what he's doing. Here's the code. Go on in. Look at the property. Call me back and I'll write the offer. Because you're too friendly with them. No, you still have to abide by the code of ethics. There have been members found in violation for showing vacant properties that didn't have a scheduled showing. Hey, let's go look at it again. I know it's vacant. We can just go on in. I know the code already. I've got my card, my super key, my uh, whatever you guys are using. That's a violation. 
All right. Members found in violation for giving access to a listing to a client without the agent being present. Dude, this is probably number one. This is probably the number one violation that I see. And I'm not going to get on a soapbox and, and preach to you, but I'm telling you, I see this all the time. I see it from both sides. I've seen agents tell me they've done it. I've seen investors tell me the agents have done it. They can't go in a property without you. You are the licensed uh, cog in this wheel. Don't fall for that. I've had my own investors. Dude, I know where you live. I'm way up here on the north side. I'm only going to go in and look at two or three things again. Just give me the code. I'll go in. Now, times have changed and now we have a lot of limited access methodology, meaning we've got super keys. We've got, uh, what's the one I can't remember? Uh, the little card access. Some of them have Wi-Fi that uh, the agent has on their phone. So maybe we have curtailed a lot of this, but I can remember back in the old days of the combo locks where the uh, investor would say, hey, what's the code? I'll, I'll just run in real quick. That's a violation. There have been violations in a couple different states where agents have left. That's still the same thing, dude. You know, don't try and defend yourself by saying, well, I opened the door, I was there and granted them access. Then you turn around and left and went to another showing or you went home and they were there by themselves. So you can't leave them there unattended either. Those are obviously going to be violations. Now, there are probably a myriad other violations and we could talk about them if you'd like. Or if you're at home listening to this and you've seen another violation, hey, email me, Raymond at realuniversity.com. Tell me another one. I'll add it to this. I'm just saying these are very common ones I have seen in multiple states and multiple MLSs where agents have been fined up to a thousand dollars and could be other issues. So don't do anything, any of these. You still have the same ethical responsibilities to your investor client that you would have in any finger quotes normal mom and pop transaction, okay?